All right, guys, so I usually start these videos off with a lot of hyperbole and jokes. And frankly, the results I've gotten from quitting caffeine and getting it absolutely out of my life, except for maybe like a treat once a month, they're so ridiculous that it almost sounds like a joke. So I'm not gonna do that here, and I'm just gonna dive straight into it because I think this is gonna be a long video, but I'm gonna get to everything as quickly as I possibly can, which is why I quit caffeine, how I did it, the short-term cons of it, the long-term cons, and then the major pros, and really how it's changed me as a person, the way I work, and really just improved my, my, my mental well-being and quality of life so much. And so, give me a few minutes, and if you're drinking caffeine right now and you wanna quit, this video is going to show you how to quit. It's going to show you to stop. And if you don't have 20 minutes to watch this, one of the things caffeine does to you is it makes it so you can't focus on the things you want to get. It makes it hard to achieve things in an orderly fashion. And if you're distracted trying to click on 10 different other videos and you're high in caffeine right now, that's probably why. Even when you're off caffeine, it's still doing it to you. So conquer down and fight what your brain is saying here because it's going to help you out. I mean, as quick as I possibly can. So let's get into the why. First off, about 30 days ago, I quit caffeine. This has been the hardest thing I've ever quit in my life. I've given up smoking pot. I've given up drinking. I've given up sugar. Uh, I've given up any excessive addictive eating whatsoever. I've given up prescription medications. This is by far the hardest. Because as an entrepreneur, it is directly tied into how I work. For 10 years of my life, it's been directly connected to my workflow. Step one to gain the work is drink some coffee. All right, and step one to... And step two, when I start slowing down, is drink more coffee. That's been part of the workflow. And the reason I got off of it is because I'm not going to explain all the health negatives here. This is explained in this video right here. But it affects the three areas that are most important to being an effective entrepreneur and me being an effective CEO. It affects your brain and causes overwhelming amounts of stress, which make you not be able to think correctly while overloading your brain with dopamine, which lowers your ability to be motivated to do things when you're not on coffee. It ruins your sleep, whether you're taking a minimal amount or not, which is critical to being smart. It messes up your stomach, which is critical, again, to thinking clearly and being at your peak. All this is proven and it is undebatable that caffeine is not healthy for you. If you go look at all those studies, they're cited in the video that's linked below or above this video. It's just not. And I'm not going to take the time in this video to explain it again because it took me like 30 minutes last video. And so overall, one of the main reasons I got off is I had tons of anxiety when I was off caffeine. I couldn't feel motivation without caffeine. It was really messing up my digestion. It causes ulcers. It lowers your stomach acid. It gives you H. pylori. It's just terrible in that regard. And my sleep was terrible. Literally aging faster than I should be. Um, depressed when I'm not on caffeine. It, it's terrible. So that's the reason I got off this. But I also knew that I could be 10 times better if I wasn't relying on this. And I've heard from so many people who have quit it that they have way more energy and they're able to focus and work throughout the day. And so that's what I wanted to achieve. And I'll talk about that more in the pros and everything I gained from it. So how did I quit? Now, I don't think everybody should quit the same way that I quit. I'm just going to tell you how I did it because I have failed to quit caffeine so many times. The urge when I go cold turkey to just go and, and drink one caffeine, I, I failed for years at this, years and years, because it's so painful to be off caffeine, not because you also are feeling uh, the addiction withdrawals, but because you're watching everything you kind of care about <clears throat> and who you are as a person kind of fall to the wayside for a while. I define myself as an entrepreneur and being able to get up and work and do crazy things like that. And caffeine's just been a part of that. It's just strictly been a part of that. And so during the period when I was getting off caffeine for a few weeks, I wasn't effective at anything. And it's, it's hard. It's hard to watch things that are important to you go to the wayside, but it's 10 times worth it. And I'll explain why in this video. So what I did that finally worked this time is I take a seven day vacation every single quarter and I'll go somewhere, I'll do something. This quarter, I just said, I'm gonna stay at home and I'm not gonna drink caffeine. And I'm gonna allow myself not to work this week so I don't have to feel like I'm missing on work, I'm just gonna take a vacation. So the entire time, I just sat down and I played Animal Crossing uh, the entire time and I built a really cool city. And that's what I just did. And I just let myself be a failure for a week um, while dealing with the withdrawal symptoms. And by doing that, the withdrawal symptoms aren't that bad. Okay, you're gonna be like, man, I really wish I had a coffee or whatever. But the thing that's gonna get you hooked back in the coffee is, is the fact that it's part of your workflow or how you behave as a person. Before you get to work is usually where most people get addicted to coffee. I have to take it before I work out. I have to take it before I do something. And if you're not doing anything, you don't feel that pressure that you're missing out. And so that's what I did. That's how I got off of it. And the first seven days suck. And so what I wanna do now is I wanna talk about the cons and the short-term cons and then the long-term cons 
of not drinking coffee. The long-term cons are very minimal. The short-term cons are huge, okay? Uh, but the long-term benefits are insane, okay? So it's like you, you start off paying this big price, then the price becomes very small, and you're getting a 10x return on it. So here's exactly what happened. The first seven days, some headaches, but basically just no motivation. I'm a super motivated person. My channel's all about motivation. I'm constantly just like trying to improve myself, literally no F's given for anything important. It was just depressing, you know, because it's like, you're like, what is this? What's going on? Who am I without coffee? And the secret, like I've talked about in other videos where I talk about how coffee works, I'm just going to cover, I'm not going to cover everything that I covered in those videos. If you want to check out like why I got scared out of coffee, why coffee is not beneficial to you whatsoever, go watch those videos. But the short of it is that coffee, when you're taking caffeine, what it does is it basically locks your brain from being able to operate at its full potential. And if you put caffeine to it, it it gets you to like 70% of your potential. You're basically taking caffeine not to get a buzz or get energy. You're taking it uh, because caffeine is holding your energy hostage. It's a drug that your brain's addicted to. And when you truly don't have any caffeine in your system for a while, you have much more energy. You have the same energy that you have uh, with caffeine times like 1.5 through the entire day stably. And so you have to understand that when you get off caffeine, the thing that really used to always push me back, I'm like, this is who I am. Like caffeine is part of who I am. I love this stuff. It's not. What caffeine does is it locks away the part of yourself that you enjoy so much that you can only get a glimpse of when you drink caffeine. So that was really depressing the first week. Um, no, no major withdrawal symptoms. I didn't have like bad headaches. The just most painful thing was no motivation and really no energy. And what would happen is my sleep also started... I'm just going to get into more like the, the other cons. My sleep started to reverse. I would usually wake up about 3 a.m. and go to bed at 7 o'clock at night. And there's so many good things that happen, which I'm going to get into in the pros. Like there's a lot of good things that happen these weeks. I just want to talk about the cons. But I would end up sleeping just a lot, like 12 hours a night. And I'd wake up feeling really, really groggy. And it, I, was, I was just gross. One week into it, you start to feel okay again. And so you can kind of get back to work and what you're doing, but you're not really effective. And the most painful thing for me is that as a CEO, there's no one that really forces me to work. I have to be driven by my own motivation and my own excitement to be creative. So because I had no motivation, I really didn't move things forward and I couldn't be creative. And so I could just like, I could show up for work, but I wasn't the powerful CEO I'm supposed to be. I wasn't really like a good leader during this time. And I like explain to people like, this is what's going on and whatnot. And my, my company's in a period where I'm not as essential as I have needed to be in the past or I'm gonna need to be in the future. So it was a good time for that. And so during that time period, I just wasn't good. I wasn't motivated to do funny videos. I wasn't motivated to do things. And this, this period of bleh uh, extended for about three weeks before I started feeling good again. Another thing that was really difficult is your, your appetite gets really out of control and you become very weak to things you used to resist, like overeating, um, doing bad habits, like watching television. All your, your willpower basically kind of goes out the window because your body is, you're, you're fighting off this temptation to drink coffee so much that you don't really have willpower to avoid anything else. So I wasn't like going and overeating, but what I would usually do is I would fast every single day and I'd fast till about noon and that's really, really hard to do when you get off coffee at the first time. When I also got off coffee, what helped a whole lot, which was very difficult, is I did a two-day dry fast. That's where you don't do any water or food for two days. I also, uh, just last week, did another one. So I did two of those in a month, and that really clears a lot of the caffeine out of your system. That's a big secret I forgot to mention. But it was very difficult to do that because usually you're super high in caffeine when you're doing fast, and that will block your hunger and allow you to like eat in an intermittent fasting way that's, that's easier. And so what happened is I constantly kind of break my calorie limits. And I noticed I just would put on weight more consistently because I wasn't fasting every single day. And so that was a big con as well. But overall, that's really the biggest cons of getting off caffeine. It's watching the things you care about, not get the same level of attention or love. It's like you have all these passions, but you can only be passionate about it and work on it hard when you're high on caffeine. The only long-term cons that I've seen after about a month, the fourth week, I feel fantastic. I feel amazing right now. It's incredible, and I'll talk about that when I get into the pros. The biggest con overall is uh, the inability to really stave off hunger. Effectively, you have to be way better at, at managing your hunger and dealing with it. With caffeine, you can kind of cover that up. The only other sort of con is your workflow changes. So 
what I would do is I would pop out of bed like 4 a.m., pound a coffee, and just get after it. That's not how it works when you're off caffeine, and that's not necessarily a con, but what I do now is I get up about 7 a.m., and I kind of diddle around for an hour, get ready, and then I start working. And so that's one of the big only cons, if you can call that a con. So I'm gonna more so focus on, on the pros you probably care about. Do I feel good? Do I have energy? Those general things. Can I still enjoy things again? I'm gonna talk about the health things very briefly. Digestion, much better. Sleep, perfect. I have perfect sleep every single night. I never wake up tired. I never wake up um, feeling weird. And the thing you, I noticed with when I was on caffeine, you have, you, it messes up your adrenals and so you have burst of energy at like really inappropriate times. So you have burst of energy around like 3, 4 a.m. if you really drink a lot of coffee. And then you have burst of energy before you go to bed and then you don't sleep. So it like messes up your cycle um, of everything. And the cool thing about sleep now too is I don't get sleepy during the day. Um, and, and when I would wake up with caffeine, I'd often be really sleepy even if uh, I'd taken caffeine. That's because you're basically charging up a huge amount of debt. Again, that's covered in the health videos. What you instead have throughout the day is you have a stable, really good energy. So you're never gonna hit that crazy energy you have with caffeine, but that's good. That's not like a good level of energy and you don't wanna focus how you work around that. And I'll talk about that when I get into workflows. But more importantly, you have a stable energy throughout the day and you're energetic all the way to bed, but then you just go to sleep. That's the biggest difference I noticed. And there's no like high intensity, high stress moments in the day and your body can just like relax. Digestion wise, I just generally feel a lot better when I eat food, okay? And I honestly think I've just destroyed my stomach from coffee, drinking on an empty stomach for years, and it's gonna take a lot longer for me to see benefits there. Um, it just completely tears up your stomach, and I think I, think I need to be like another 60, 90 days to have you see any more results there. Thought process and mental well-being. The coolest thing about caffeine is when you're not on caffeine anymore, I I've noticed a few weird things. Like, first off, I'm like way more aggressive as a person. Um, not mean, but like I am, I don't, I'm, I'm not, I'm very open to confrontation. Um, and it's kind of like weird. Uh, the, the, the other thing is like, the reason why I think I'm like that is because there's not as much anxiety when you're around people. So when I'm around people, I, I will like greet people now in like the elevator when I go down in my place and I'm not like afraid to interact with people. And that time you're also a lot more calm. Um, so like I feel myself being a lot more aggressive um, if, if I don't like what a person's doing or a lot more speaking my mind, that's just like a really weird thing. Maybe it's just cause I'm grumpy cause I'm off caffeine, but also my thoughts are just a lot clearer. And the one thing that was really funny is when you first get off caffeine, your thoughts are really scattered. That's like one of the main symptoms. And it's not until a week four where you're really thinking like clearly again. And so your thoughts become a lot clearer and you can kind of like compartmentalize things. When you're on caffeine, even when you're off, you have anxiety all the time. And so it's like really hard to like put one thing here and one thing here and then one thing here. And you're just kind of like a disorganized mess. I can do like one thing and then shift to work for like two hours and then shift off to another thing and then come back to work for two hours and just work in a really stable way, um, a balanced way throughout my day. It's actually far more productive. And generally I'm a lot more relaxed and just able to make good decisions. So the next thing I wanna talk about is like how, how has it affected work? So first off, the first three weeks, terrible. Third week, going into it, fourth week, like pretty good. After the third, if you get past the third week, you're good. And it's really weird how it's affected my workflow because if when you're on caffeine, how you basically work is you, you have to get everything in in that first four hours a day and then you like, you, you just, you can't do anything. You can't cope with work anymore. Like I see customer support tickets coming in and after like, 8 a.m. in the past, I'm like, I can't do it because I go wake up at 4 a.m., 8 a.m. and I'm just kind of, like, kind of bonked. And so you gotta get everything in in that period. And you're not really even that effective in that period because you're super high in caffeine and you feel like you're getting a lot of work done, but you're really not. And the way most humans operate is they work throughout the day. And so like my work hours were just really screwy. So now what happens is I get up about 7 a.m. and I don't really get to work till about 8 a.m. My hours are just normal again. And it's really nice because I can actually interact with people and not be at, at sleep at like 7 p.m. anymore. How I work those really differently because it used to be just like, you gotta get it all done in 12 hours straight. Now what I do is I'll wake up, I'll probably work for like an hour and a half, then I'll go for like a walk, go get some groceries, I'll come back, work for an hour and a half, then kind of like go and diddle around or do something else, work for an hour and a half. And what happened is like when you're doing coffee, you have to get everything done all at once. You have to get everything all in in that four hours. When you're off, you can like take a break and come back and still work with the same intensity. What's also really cool is you can just work throughout the entire day. And 
if something's happening at like 4 p.m., 6 p.m., usually when I'm like kind of signing off for the day, I can still handle it. That's not a problem. I still have the same amount of energy. So that just changed exactly how, it changed everything about how I work, how I sleep and how everything gets done. The cool thing too is like I can approach things at 3 p.m. with the same intensity I can at 8 a.m., allowing me to just be effective all day long. And it also allowed me to just pick my projects a lot better because I'm not trying to get everything all in once and I'm not like panicky. I can just kind of slow down and be like, this is the only thing that really needs to get done right now. What's the big thing I need to get done today? And just knock that out and consistently just focus on the important stuff without having to feel like everything has to get done. Everything has to work all the time. It's just, yeah. And the thing is, I'm not distracted by a bunch of different routes. I don't pick up projects. I don't get overly excited because when you're on caffeine, you're just getting overwhelmed with dopamine all the time. And so you're getting excited about projects that are stupid. And now I'm just like focused, just straight and calm on one thing. And overall, I would say my pr productivity, because I was productive on caffeine. I'm a productive person overall. I'd say because I can get stuff done throughout the entire day, I'm probably about 1.5x to on like a really good day, 2x caffeine. Because caffeine will work really early in the week for me and then just you get to the points where just like, you're not really effective. You're not really getting anything done because of like your work periods and time. And sometimes like caffeine doesn't work really well for just like steady focused work on one thing. You're, you're super ADHD and, and, and dopamine ridden when you're doing it. So you're just focused on way too much. And so I'd say 1.5 to 2X. I've built a lot of businesses, been very successful drinking caffeine. I'm not saying you can't be successful and drink caffeine. That's not what I'm saying at all. Okay. Uh, I'm saying that my life is just significantly better and the way I work is significantly more impactful. It's not like you're an alcoholic uh, who can't function at all when you're on caffeine. You can, you can function very highly. Just the way you work is very different. And then finally, overall, just the way I interact with people and appreciate people is just much higher because I'm not anxious all the time. When you're off caffeine, if you're drinking every single day, you're going to be anxious because your brain is just rewired to work like that. It's just how it is. And you're constantly thinking way too much and your brain also isn't getting the satisfaction it needs when you're talking to people or doing any other habits if you're not on caffeine at the time. Everything is just way more fun on caffeine. And so you're gonna drink caffeine before interacting with people or doing anything and it's just not fun. And so when you're off of it, you're just relaxed and it's a lot easier to just enjoy people, appreciate people and be more friendly. So overall, that's, that's everything. That's what I've experienced in 30 days. And frankly, my plan with caffeine is I'm not never going to drink caffeine again. Maybe once a month when I'm in a pinch for like work or something, or I just want to have like a little treat, I'll do that. Cause I still love caffeine. It's, it's, it's fun. I enjoy the thing. I enjoy it, but it's not meant to be used like something you do every single morning. And the biggest difference is this. You would think like, oh man, I'm going to be craving caffeine for the rest of my life. I'm going to be feeding for it. I can tell you with complete honesty that I don't miss caffeine at all. I'm not sad. I'm not feeling like I'm missing part of myself. I don't feel uh, like there's a problem when I'm not on caffeine. I don't wake up and go, oh man, I need caffeine. It's not some hard thing that I'm yearning for constantly and just not able to hit that. I'm just, it's not like I lost a part of myself and I don't feel like I've lost anything. I've just gained. It's, it's like you were brainwashed or something like that. And the way that I think about caffeine right now and like, I'm not going to say like, I don't still enjoy caffeine, but it's a lot different before it was like, I had to wake up every single day and I had to have caffeine to feel happy. It was like a medication I had to have like a drug addict. And that's not how it's meant to be used. The, the way I feel like it now is like, I still enjoy drinking. I still enjoy getting drinks. Okay. With, with friends, I don't do it when I'm in a super work mode period, I'll go months without drinking. But if I'm in a more lax period, you know, I'm not against having like a few cups of tequila or something to go and doing something like that. But, you know, I, I think about like, oh man, that'll be fun. And while I, how I think about caffeine now is kind of the same way. It's not like something like, oh, okay, we're going to plan on doing it every single day. It's like, oh yeah, you know, what might be fun is waking up like Saturday and getting a little high with caffeine and like working on some creative stuff and just having fun with it. Just like going and getting drinks with friends. It's not like I'm going to go and drink a bunch of tequila every single night uh, just to get through the day. That's not how it's meant to be used. And that's kind of how I feel about it now. It's kind of like just a special occasion kind of thing. I, I don't think of it as really like part of my life are part of how I behave, you know? And so if you can think about that, if you like beer, like maybe you like to have cake on a special occasion, that's how I feel like it. I still love cake, but I'm not going to eat cake every single day. And I don't feel the need to eat cake every single day. I'm actually very much against it. So it's the same exact thing. And I'm very cautious about this, but I also feel comfortable if I were just to drink a cup of coffee at dinner or like on, a, on an odd morning where it's not like tied in the work, like special occasion treat kind of thing, because that, that week period, that seven days and that, that three weeks, I was prepared for it. 
And so I didn't take it too badly, but I can't do that again. I, I literally can't do that in my life or again. I can't do that to my business. I can't do that to myself. Um, I can't do that to my mind. Like I'm not, I'm not going through this again. I was prepared for it and was willing to lose, but losing for three weeks straight when you kind of have my personality type, I'm, I'm never doing that again. I'm never going to drink multiple cups of coffee a week. I'm never going to do it repeatedly in a day. Um, I, I'm really just soup once, once, twice a month, maybe special occasion kind of things. Um, because this, this terrifies me. I'm terrified of it. So I have such a strong uh, thing telling me, even when I'm feeling like, Hey, let's, let's get some caffeine. It's like, no, you remember this. You might, you, I'd rather chop off my pinky because caffeine, because caffeine starts changing your brain after about the second day you start using it. You should never be using it two days in a row. You should never be using it at least it should be like a fun little thing like a beer okay you should drink it like you drink beer i'll maybe drink it as like an after dinner drink or maybe once a month like hey you know let's have like a, a caffeine fun day and do like some creative work or something like that but absolutely nothing other than that once a month never as a stimulant never as something you rely on to do work when you do that you start limiting yourself and caffeine starts holding your brain hostage because of how the chemicals work that's pretty much it. I, I can't recommend getting off of it enough. Uh, my life is just significantly easier and less stressful and things just work. Like I, I was obsessed with biohacking, getting perfect sleep and like thinking clearly and doing all these things. And I would do everything I possibly could not to cut caffeine out of the picture. I was willing to do diet changes. I was willing to do pretty much anything that allowed me to keep this habit in my life because I thought it was something that was about me and that I just generally liked caffeine as part of who I am. Nothing's further from the truth. Nothing's further from the truth. Caffeine holds who you are hostage. And if you want to reach perfection, all those areas I talked about, just quit caffeine. It just, it just works again. You don't have to be doing biohacking. You don't have to be eating these special fruits grown by uh, Star Wars trained goats that live on the side. You can just, you can just stop drinking caffeine. And it's going to suck really bad the first week. You should just take off if you can. You should do a dry fast during that week. And then you should just expect that like, hey, the next three weeks are not going to be great. They're, they're not going to be great. Because caffeine is an addictive substance. It should have warning labels on it. Frankly, the way people are encouraged to use it, the way it's put in foods, it's the, one of the biggest scams of all time. It literally should be regulated just like cigarettes are, but it never will be because the companies have gone away by covering up what it really does to people. For every health benefit it has, there's 15 negative benefits, and those are covered up or basically eliminated through studies. So, for example, in like a study, they'll say, oh, yeah, it helps, it helps give you antioxidants. And they'll show those results of the study from people that didn't really drink caffeine in the first place or like are doing really well with caffeine. They won't show you the people that are suffering from the problems. They'll like eliminate them from the studies. And they'll find all sorts of ways to work it around and avoid it so it shows it in a good light because it is one of the most profitable industries, if not the most profitable industry in the world. Because you can make something super cheap. I mean, like a can of cola, super cheap to make. You can give it to kids. You can get them addicted to it for the rest of their life. And suddenly you have people that have to buy four dollars five dollars worth of coffee every single day and it costs like 10 cents to make it's it's ingeniously evil so that being said i overall i can't suggest enough if you want to get off of it i liked my route um, because it just you have to get into place where you're like you're just going to deal with the suck you just admit you're going to lose what a lot of people do is they try to take caffeine and try to stay who they are I just said, hey, I'm going to lose these three weeks. It's not going to be great. I'm just going to have to give this up for the next 60 years of my life. I want, to, I want to sacrifice these three weeks for the next 60 years of my life. Hopefully, I'm 32 right now. Man, that'd be 92. That's old. Because honestly, just the things it does, it doesn't directly kill anybody, but it messes up your gut. It messes up your sleep. It overloads your body with stress. Those are the three things that are linked to disease, aging too quickly, poor mental ability, you can't tell me something that negatively affects those three areas is acceptable in any way if you want to be a high performer. It's, it's just not. It's just not. And so that's the biggest biohacking you ever do. That's it, guys. If you like this video, could you please leave a like? It super helps out the channel. Be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because what I do now, instead of running ads, I'm going to post a link to my Twitter, okay, at ZSS Becker. And about once every three weeks, I'm just going to share a link to almost thousands of dollars worth of courses I used to sell. And I'll post that notification on YouTube. And you won't see that in the comments. You won't see that post on YouTube unless you're subscribed and hit that notification bell. So the guarantee you see that, 
subscribe, hit the notification bell. There's a ton of videos on my channel about the health effects of caffeine, um, why I quit caffeine and what it was doing to me. I didn't get into that in this video. And if you're really interested in optimizing yourself, I'd recommend watching a dopamine detox video after this. That's insanely important as well. <clears throat> and you'll understand why caffeine actually makes you very unmotivated with your goals. And um, that's it. I'll see you next time.